So on the culture corner, what we're talking about in terms of regime outrage over not showing the proper respect to the the saints of the state religion is a tweet that was put out by I want to believe I want to say it was the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire, so the state affiliate party of the Libertarian Party, um, who has been known in recent weeks or months to put out some rather spicy content on mm. Twitter. And what they did is they posted a picture of Meghan McCain a couple years ago when John McCain died, uh, crying very theatrically over her father's American flag draped coffin. How disingenuous, Dane. Are you saying that she wasn't being completely genuine within that moment? No, I'm... I Okay, maybe... She the, can't mourn the loss of her father, albeit her father might have been... Listen. ...in league with Satan himself? When I say... <laughs> when I say theatrical, I maybe what I meant is whether the genuineness of her emotions aside, it was very... Let's say it wasn't a subdued reaction. I'll say that. It was mm. not... Again, like maybe she was... Maybe it was a little extra. Maybe it was sincere. Maybe it wasn't. But the point is that okay. the picture, she seems to be in a lot of anguish. That's the picture that they used. And their tweet accompanying this picture was pretty simple. It just said, happy holidays. Now... <laughs> and, For what? Well, they posted it on the, the anniversary of his funeral. So... The holiday is John McCain died. That's the funeral. Now, some of us might have seen that holiday in quite different eyes. Yes, quite well, a different perspective. And believe me, we're and I, listen. I'm going to warn you, and I'm going to warn the listener slash viewer from the beginning. I'm trying to I'm trying to ease them into the topic. It's like a hot tub. You don't do a cannonball into a hot tub. You ease it in toe by toe. You get past the nethers, and then you're good. So that's what we're trying to get you past the nethers right now. Well, David and I have very specific family experiences that color our emotions or our thoughts about this particular topic. And so if they get away from me later in this segment, n now you know why. I mean, if you've been a listener of the show for long enough, you know the story of our grandfather. You know the role that John McCain played in abandoning him, lying about it, covering it up, yada, yada, yada. So you know there's no love lost there from us. But... I don't know that anybody at the LP New Hampshire Twitter account or any of the other people that commented on what they had to post have those same sort of personal reaction or personal interactions with John McCain. Um, and that's not to say that our position is necessarily more justified, but just so you know where we're coming from. But the broad pearl clutching, because I, I want to take it broad and then I want to narrow it and kind of go after libertarians in particular, a specific type of libertarians. Broadly speaking, there was a lot of outrage on Twitter about this. How dare you? How, Regardless of what you think about John McCain and his policies, how dare you mock the anguish of his grieving daughter, right? A lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth over poking fun at McCain because where I first saw it is Megan McCain had retweeted it saying, you know, how sad we've that we've come to this and I hope that nobody ever does this to you. Like Don't load their gun for them. Yada, yada, yada. So she, she was very sad. Um, so yeah, I mean, before we, we get into more of it, David, what do you think about the outrage over, if we want to call them mean words on Twitter? If we want to say what they did was mean to Megan McCain, what do you think about the outrage about being mean to Megan McCain? I think you shouldn't be famous. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't try to run the goddamn world and expect people to not say some sleight of hand shit about you. Especially if you're the daughter of somebody that was kind of a polarizing figure within the the Senate. Senate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, uh, I think as a politician, you need to have thicker skin, which is a dying commodity nowadays. And especially... On a fake fucking space. Dying commodity. I like what you did there. Yeah. Because he died. <laughs> there it goes. 
The subtlety is gone. <laughs> well, no, you still get credit for the subtlety. I know, I, just, I know, you know, but now it's like... <laughs> Anywho, um, <laughs> David's comedic talent is wasted on me. Oh, uh, it's, it's not. But I'm glad you laugh. I don't know if hey, they're laughing out there. Know. But uh, I'll I'll I'll, su- I'll surmise it as this: is that if you base your life off of Twitter or what happens on Twitter or whatever transpires around Twitter or your profile, I truly do feel sorry for you because Twitter is in the world. Twitter is slight microcosms of what happened that day. Go ahead. Do, and if you do have Twitter and you're, you're, you're deeply saddened by this reaction, go ahead and look at a, a post that you had two years ago and see how you feel about that. So is it made up now? Have you changed? Have you moved on? Cool. So that's a made up space. doesn't matter. And we try to make these make-believe places so... The, the fulcrum of our lives a lot of the times. So what I'll say is no one's above reproach and Twitter is a fantasy land. Stay the fuck away from it. Uh, a toxic fantasy land, I might add. There, no one wins Twitter unless you've got blue hair for today. And tomorrow when purple hair is in and blue hair is a racist, it's all right. So what's that old adage, Dane? Play stupid games, win stupid prizes? Exactly. There you go. That's Twitter in a nutshell. And I'm, yeah. I, I'll be goddamned if I base any of my opinions of the world from anything that's ever transpired on Twitter ever. And, you know, on that stupid game, stupid prizes theme, I want to say a couple things about what the, what the tweet from LPNH was after and what the pearl clutchers were saying about it. So, first of all, there is the issue of John McCain himself. Now, the pearl clutchers easily dismiss John McCain's entire career by saying that, oh, well, you're poking grief or you're poking fun at the grief of his daughter, not at him personally. Well, you can't exactly just brush that career aside because the tweet that uh, Megan put out about it, which will be maybe right around here, I think our video guy will put it in so you can see exactly what she said. It's not here or here. <laughs> it's floating. Right here. Like a disembodied spirit right next to me. Like I McCain's. It. Is it here? <laughs> let me touch it, Carlos. Like McCain's disembodied spirit. I said spirit. your name. Let me touch it. <laughs> oh. So the first thing is you can't disaggregate uh, John Ooh. McCain's career from the tweet because. Firewood. Did you make that up on the spot, by the way? Yeah. No, no, it's a real word. It's Disaggregate, real word? yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's the it's to do the opposite of aggregate, which is put things together. I, I understand yeah. the, the the pretext. So you can't separate. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, I know what it meant. <laughs> just I was just wondering. Anyway, you can't exactly disaggregate it because McCain herself said, I don't want to live in, you know, something to the effect of, and again, you can My see daddy's it right shadow. here. I don't want to live in, in a world where, like, we're this mean together. Implying that a better world is where mean tweets don't go out on Twitter. And which got me thinking, and Did anyone again, die? You, can, you can hear the, or you can see the WMD podcast um, response to this, is she's worried about a world of mean tweets. But her father spent an entire career fighting for a world of endless war, of lying about what happened to other POWs, lying to their families, covering it up, and making sure that they never came home. And, you know, did a little bit of hobnobbing around with the guys that eventually became ISIS, as well as some of the uh, people that were in the higher-ups in the Azov Battalion over there in Ukraine that are, you know, wandering around in Nazi paraphernalia. But, you know, I guess... If, if he fights for that world of total civility and peace and tranquility and, uh, you know, coexistence among all men and women, then I, I, guess, I guess she's right that a world of mean tweets is one that we should really be afraid of, not but, the one that he spent an entire career building and advocating for. Dane, at least look at his voting record. He stood up for the veterans. He stood up for their health care when they came home. Right? Yeah. Ask yourselves, and you can go look back at the numbers yourself. Ask yourself why when he ran for president and actually when Ron was running against him in the primaries, why veterans almost across the board didn't want to have anything to do with that piece of human garbage. 
because despite his political record being built on war hero this and Maverick, Superman they call him a Maverick. Uh, he basically used the military as a pawn to advance his political career while he completely abandoned people like our grandfather, um, you know, to basically placate his political betters, the ones who put him in the position. And you say that he at least the he got place. there on his own accord. He didn't because his daddy was an admiral. Basically, he got right. to choose the position that he wanted. So again, now, go ahead. That's only half of the puzzle because again, that doesn't answer the pearl clutchers who say, well, but you're poking fun at his daughter's grief, not at him in particular. And what I'd like to say about his daughter's grief is, okay, fine, as far as that goes. But let me tell you something, Megan McCain. You got a life with your father. Your children got to know their grandfather. You got closure at a funeral to cry over his casket to have that picture in the first place. You got time. That flag that sits behind David had nothing to come home behind it. And not only did it have nothing to come home behind it, but your father spent an entire political career making sure that the man that stands behind that flag never came home. That when he was shot down and abandoned by the government that your father fought for, he had three kids all under the age of eight. He had a young wife who now had to raise three kids all on her own. He has grandkids who have never met him. And all of that was covered up, lied about, and your father built his political career on that, among other things, in terms of warmongering and always funding the war machine with more and more tax dollars. That's the world that your father fought for. That's the world that your, your kid's grandfather fought for. So you're going to have to pardon people like us if we have a little bit lack of, a little bit less sympathy for you when you get the career you get the benefit of the career that he built on lies. You get the lifetime with your family member. You get the closure at a funeral to cry over a casket that he's actually in because a lot of us didn't. So when you're upset about mean tweets, some words on Twitter that offend you, just remember the, what's the buzzword of the day? Privilege. Remember the privilege you had to live out your life with your father. A lot of people didn't get that privilege. And on the backs of people like him is why they don't. They never had that privilege. So miss us with your tears of pity and your wishing for a better world that your father never fought for. I uh, don't have a joke at this point. Uh <laughs> You'd be surprised. Um, but yeah, just to hearken on to Dane's sentiment, it's just, uh, why do we always have to emote for the people that have so much more than the rest of us ever had, ever? Like, why do I have to, why do I have to mourn a celebrity's death? I don't. Why do I have to mourn McCain's passing? I don't. Like, just because everyone knew your name did not mean that you're a good person. There were a lot of good people, an immense amount of good people that were left behind, that families st stood up to McCain on the House floor saying, we have evidence of people's existence and we want to know where they're at. And Maverick, John McCain, Mr. USA didn't come home early when he is captured by the Viet Cong. Was he captured by the Viet Cong? Mm -hmm. um, they said they tortured him, but he stayed because he's, a, he's an American. He wanted to stay with his troops. Well, he would have been committing political suicide, number one, if he had come home. And if you'll notice, if you think we're just shooting, shooting shit, he had two casts on his arm when he was making those propaganda videos. Now, a lot of people will hold the propaganda videos against him. You're supposed to do whatever you have to in the POW camps to survive. That's it. That's all the truth. So we won't hold that against him. But he had casts, which means they were taking care of him, which means they were making sure that he didn't die because he was a commodity to them, because he was exchanged, because he was, again, as we aforementioned, an admiral's son. So everything about him, 
from top to bottom was a lie. And that lie went on to cause a lot of harm, a lot of damage, and was willing to do it again and again and again to more generations. So excuse us, as Dane said, for us having no remorse for John McCain's passing. And I won't say what I want to say, but I'll just put it this way. I don't think he went north. Yeah. And I mean, if if you're outraged over words on a computer screen as opposed to Grow up. as opposed to a life Educate that was yourself. stolen from multiple generations from thousands of families, I mean, the the privilege that it would give me to laugh in your face is more than I could ever even ask for, and that's more that's definitely more than you deserve because any attention that you get from any of the family members who actually lost somebody who never came home. You don't, you don't deserve to, to shine their shoes. And if you disparage any of those families, you're not an American. Put it that way. You haven't, if you, if you come from privilege or anything like that, like, just, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, we all carry the burden. We all lose children. We all lose fathers, sons, daughters to the rigors of war, but at the same time, you have to appreciate that, and we have to move forward together. And he wasn't one of us. So I would say I wouldn't warn him yeah. in the slightest. And as David was given a, a brief synopsis before we move on of, of McCain's career and all that kind of stuff, we encourage you to go to uh, our website that was started by our grandmother that put up all of the documents that tell you basically the entire story from shoot down and capture all the way to fighting the government and everything McCain did along the way to to thwart her efforts at powherdlicka.com. We'll put it in the show notes page. Um, you can find those documents and look at them for yourself. They are government documents. They are declassified interagency documents that talk about how POWs were abandoned, that talk about what John McCain and other people in the United States government did to lie to the family members. And so this isn't just, you know, sour milk from our end. I mean, the milk is pretty fucking sour. But when we now have to live an entire life of seeing the Megan McCains of the world be lamenting a better world because she's quote unquote cyber bullied. Um, just suffice it to say it pales in comparison to the world that her dad actually spent an entire career fighting for. And you know what? So if he would have actually done what he was supposed to do as a maverick and stood up for the people that he was supposed to stand up for, maybe that tweet wouldn't have gone out. He might have a little bit more respect than he has. Not this fake respect from the Twitter uh, warriors that don't know anything about his career. The only thing they know is what CNN and Fox told them to believe about how great of an American he was. They don't know anything about this man. And I don't begrudge them that. I don't begrudge them that they don't know anything. Because if you don't have a personal family experience like ours, you I mean, how can we possibly expect you to know it? But now you do. And Please share this episode with as many people who are outraged about that as you know in your life, because the more people that know it, make sure that future McCain's never happen, or at least they're held to account when they try to. And at least remember that nobody sees others' blood quite as well as their own. So yeah. God bless you if you haven't had a loss, and our prayers go out to you if you had. And that's how we'll wrap up this particular yeah. segment. <laughs> 